you're watching True Review. The following series is focused on one particular franchise, as it starts out as a rival to the granddaddy of FPS games, but will quickly turn into a huge commercial success. But this success was not to last, as the franchise would see a huge decline in its popular support, to which the entire series would almost fall into obscurity, only to be pulled from the brink in one last ditched effort. This is the story of the Unreal franchise, and now it's time for the next chapter in our story. As we've seen in the previous two videos, the Unreal franchise under the Atari dynasty did not fare well. Due to three mediocre games being released back to back, support for the franchise was quickly lost, with only those hardcore gamers or diehard Unreal fans hanging on, hoping that the next game will bring the franchise back from the abyss. And, like in any fairy tale story, these fans' prayers were answered. After the reception that Epic Games, Digital Extremes, and Atari saw after the release of Unreal Tournament 2003, Atari began to put slightly more pressure on the two developing companies to go back and produce a game that will make them money. The developers went back to the drawing board and began to work on a new Unreal Tournament game. But there was one major difference this time during development. One key factor that was held onto during this next game's development that had been completely ignored in the production of the last three games, and it is this factor that would be the franchise's only hope for survival. The Unreal developing team had listened to the gaming community. Remember back to my Unreal Tournament 2003 video. In it I mentioned that several popular weapons had been removed from the game, as well as the very popular Assault gaming mode. Very aware of this, Epic Games and Digital Extremes decided to put their heads together one final time, along with support from other companies such as Psyonix, in a last ditched effort to bring this franchise out of their own self-imposed recession. This was the first time the two companies had worked in partnership on one game since the first Unreal Tournament. And in March of 2004, all of their hard work had paid off as they launched their new tournament game, Unreal Tournament 2004. As the title gives it away, they were still going with the sports style title, though at least this game was actually released in the same year that's mentioned in the title. Unreal Tournament 2003 was actually released in 2002. However, this game's beginnings has a strange tale, and so we must start the story with its release. When the game was first released, something happens that is very rare when new games are launched. Those who wish to buy the game online were given an offer. In places such as the United States, gamers were allowed to buy the game at a discount, but only on condition that they returned the gaming manual to the sender from Unreal Tournament 2003. Even more bizarre is that in the UK, not only was the game manual required, but the entire game was the price for the discount. This is understandable when you play the game for the first time, but until that moment, everyone was like, the main reason for this is simple, but again, we must go back to understand why. Back in my Unreal Tournament 2003 video, I mentioned that the game just felt like the bread and butter of deathmatch based games, and that it was lacking that certain something that would have made it a brilliant game. And Unreal Tournament 2004 resolved exactly that. Those that have previously played Tournament 2003 would all of a sudden find themselves on very familiar grounds in Tournament 2004 due to the fact that a lot of the content from 2003 was brought straight over to the new game. Most people think that most of the content was brought over, and I actually decided one day to test this theory. So I installed both onto my PC and made a note of all the maps, weapons, characters etc that were present in 2003, though I didn't make a note of the music and soundtrack mind you. But then I compared that to Tournament 2004, and you know what? All of the content is there, they just copied and pasted it straight across. UT 2004 has the entire UT 2003 game in it, just with a load more stuff. As such, it's very difficult to get a brand new, unopened copy of UT 2003, and in fact they're getting quite rare. But the thing is, that's not necessarily a bad thing, provided of course that the new addition to the game is what the franchise has been crying out for for several years now. Well, in short, yes it was. The new additions were definitely welcomed amongst gaming fans. The sniper rifle returned, and the assault mode was back and better than ever. Now each assault level was based on a reenactment of several key events that have occurred during the Unreal Universe, such as a major battle between the Human and the Scar and the Robot Rebellion, with a cutscene at the start of each level explaining the events and then going into detail what each of your objectives are, explaining that this is what happens during the actual event. Loads more maps were added, and modding was back in full force. Though modding had never really gone away, 
It was somewhat limited in Tournament 2003, and although you still could not create your own bots or change their stats, you had more control with regards to how you wanted the overall gameplay to pan out. On top of this, a brand new, never before seen gaming mode was introduced, which would become what this game is best known for. The new mode was called Onslaught, and what an appropriate name to give it. In Onslaught, there are two teams. Each team starts at opposite ends of the map with a power core. The aim of the game is to destroy your opponent's power core whilst protecting your own. But the thing is, your enemy's power core is protected by a force field. So in order to lower the force field, you need to capture certain points around the map that will make a link between your own power core and that of your enemies. Once the force field is down, you need to head into the heart of your opponent's base and blow the bitch up. Sounds easy enough, but don't forget that the enemy is trying the exact same thing on you. On the smaller maps, this mode is really fun and addictive. However, on the bigger maps, players were shocked to find something that this game was simply crying out for. Vehicles. Now, this is not the first time that vehicles were introduced in the Unreal series, but this is the first time that they got it right. From the Mantis, which is fast and good for hit and run tactics, but is easily destroyed, to the Mammoth tank that is the Goliath, equipped with a cannon and a mounted machine gun, to the Agile Raptor that can fly to any point of the map with its plasma rounds and homing missiles, this mode was the nuts. Unreal Tournament no longer felt as if the combat was trapped and closed into a small area. Now it felt like that we were in an actual futuristic war zone, with all sorts of bullets and explosives flying all around you, and with massive and really fast vehicles swimming past you, or, if you're unlucky, right towards you. In addition to this, came some more brand new gaming modes. There was Invasion and Mutant. In Invasion, the player is forced to defend themselves against multiple waves of enemies. Each wave sees different creatures and monsters trying to kill the player, and the further into the match the player gets, the more enemies are spawned, and they get a lot tougher too. One interesting fact to mention here is that all of the monsters that are featured in this gaming mode are taken straight from the original Unreal game, so veterans of the franchise will be able to appreciate this trip down memory lane. Whilst Mutant acts, for the most part, as a regular round of deathmatch, but with one major difference. One player is designated as the Mutant. As a mutant, the player will be able to do more damage to others, and will be able to take more damage before dying. Also, playing as a mutant is the only way to score kill points. However, if the mutant is killed by another player, then that player will become the mutant. This means that everyone on the map will be trying to have the mutant killed as a means of becoming the next one and getting points. On top of all of this, the single player campaign mode had also witnessed an overhaul. Whilst in this game, there's no story as such, due to the fact that Unreal Tournament 2003 had killed off the possibility of a story this time around, now taking part in the actual tournament meant more. Players who started up a new game found that they were still competing in qualifying rounds and then drafting their own team, but now money was also included, being gained through winning matches or challenging certain bots to a one-on-one -on -one showdown on a selection of maps. Money in this game is used to hire new and more skilled bots to be on your team, or by healing those bots that had taken it pretty hard in other matches. Although the addition of money was not exactly a necessary addition to the game, the fact was that it wasn't a fail of an addition, and it did make the overall experience just a slightly bit more interesting. During the development of this game, an improvement on the Unreal Engine 2 was achieved. Though the new graphical potential was not as big a jump as it was when Unreal Engine 2 was released when compared to the previous engine, this new improvement did make the game just look a little bit better. As this wasn't a completely new graphics engine, it simply became known as Unreal Engine 2.5, and with the release of the new tournament game, this graphics engine was put into practice. The graphics do look a little bit better. Though there's not a massive improvement, any improvement is always welcome. It is also clearly visible that technology was moving with the times when Tournament 2004 was released, not only because of the level of content included, with little lag or technical issues involved, or by the fact that Unreal Engine 2.5 was being used, but with all of this new content in mind, and the fact that Tournament 2003 needed three CDs in order to work, it does make me laugh every time I remember the fact that Tournament 2004 only has one disc, and yet is able to do and offer so much more than its predecessor. Unreal Tournament 2004 is what is referred to as a success. There is no other way of looking at it. Although not being a huge commercial success, it is often recognised as being a worthwhile game to play. Some gaming sites, including GameSpot, have rated this one as one of the best games ever made, putting it up there along with Unreal Tournament Game of the Year, and for good reason. 
I, on the other hand, do not completely agree with this statement. I'll admit that it's a very good game, and you can easily spend a lot of time playing through all of the maps and modes. Or you might even find yourself dedicating all of your time to just one map, but for me, I believe that there are other games out there that are far better than this. I will always hold this game dear to me, and it is really, really f***ing good. But I think you're going just a little too far in saying that it's one of the best games ever. Unless it is your favourite game ever, in which case kudos, you're allowed an opinion. Thanks to UT2004, the franchise was pulled from the brink of collapse that the previous three games had thrown it into. By this point, the previously mentioned Unreal Id Commercial War had effectively come to an end. Since its main fight was between Unreal Tournament and Quake 3 Arena, both companies hadn't really got the next step right with Unreal, as we've seen, producing some not so good games, whilst Quake didn't make a return until 2005 with Quake 4, but by then the two franchises were no longer in competition with each other. But before we end this video, we must look to the future of this franchise, or rather, what the next chapter of the story will hold. The next chapter is certainly an interesting one, as there is an entire section that I have yet to talk about. In fact, something has been happening behind the scenes during the development of UT2004 that I have yet to touch on, and these events will ultimately lead to both success in the franchise and disaster for some. Some of you who know the franchise well will be asking the question, so far we've been hearing about the PC Unreal games, but what of the console ports? Well, there are console ports, and in fact, their story is just as curious as the PC's tale, but that story will have to wait for another time. Hey guys, True Review here. You know, a lot of effort went into making this video, so why not leave me a like and subscribe if you enjoyed what you just saw. As always, don't forget to catch up on all the previous True Review episodes or the previous episodes in this series if you've just joined in. See you soon.